Um, the DNS servers, um, there are two internal um, that, as I said, are going to be run from the domain controllers. There are also two external DNS that are inside the screen subnet. Um, there are conditional forwarder set up on the internal that allow them to talk back and forth uh, and only talk to one another. Um, the external DNS will not resolve Pico play names. Uh, as far as the routing goes, um, we were asked to use RIP2 so that we could be compatible with the office in Singapore. Uh, we've done that. As I said, we have two routers running, one in the office and also one in the warehouse and a secure VPN and tunnel between the two. As far as backup and disaster recovery, uh, one of the uh, things that we wanted to do was make sure there's an off-site SAN um, storage off-site so that there's always access to that data should there be a fire, a tornado, an earthquake, flood, whatever. Um, there will also be incremental backups done every night, uh, complete backup would be done every week, uh, and then we would keep uh, a copy of an image with all managers so that they have the opportunity, if need be, on the fly to re-image a machine right there. Uh, Security is a big one, um, and there, there really was a lot to that. Um, the passwords for users will change every 60 days, as you see. Um, they have to be complex. Uh, they have to meet Microsoft's criteria as a complex password. Um, so uppercase, lowercase, symbols, and numbers. Uh, and they need to be at least 10 characters. Um, users will only have access to their own home directories and of course only IT staff can modify the registry. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Each user certainly will have access to their own home folder. Um, executives will have, of course, as you see there, read-only access to all departments and full control of their own. Uh, HR will maintain a shared folder which will include all of your uh, benefit information, your employee handbook, uh, questions you might have about uh, vacation, things like that that may not be in the employee handbook. Um, all of that would be there and would be accessible to everyone in read-only. Um, they will have, they being HR, will have full access to that folder. Um, as you see here, every department does have a suggestion box. Um, that way uh, you keep the proficiency and the, uh, the lines of communication open with all aspects of every department in the company and, and all users do have right access to that. Every user can, can uh, go in and leave a, a suggestion, hey I don't like the color of the carpet in the break room or whatever. Um, you know, the product developers will use an encrypted file system to encrypt product data and keep that secure as they move along the development process. Um, the development team also uses encrypted network connections uh, for their shared folders and then unencrypted connections uh, for any other outside communication. Uh, and finally, Help Desk has the ability to reset password for user objects in all departments except IT. Um, uh, IT will have ultimately control over anything or, or be able to gain access to anything they need to. Help Desk will not. Um, they can, however, verify DHCP settings for users should they not be able to access the network or the internet. And finally, uh, some recommendations that we we uh, come up with uh, as we designed and built this. Um, number one is is that when we built this in uh, in proof of concept, we used Windows machines for our routers. So we would strongly encourage Cisco routers and switches be used. Um, we also in proof of concept put the DHCP servers on the domain controller. Uh, we wouldn't recommend doing so. Um, would not use a RAID 1 but would rather use a RAID 5 uh, for both fault tolerance, security as well as uh, faster access to the data. Um, with RIP 2 our recommendation would be to convert everything over to open shortest path first um, for a little bit more stability and a little bit better response time. Um, we were asked to use ClamWin as, a, as an antivirus. ClamWin is an open source antivirus, as you know, and uh, the, the potential security threat we see there is, 
if it's open source, what stops someone from going in looking at the code and understanding how to step around it? So we would recommend, uh, you know, uh, any other version. If, if you prefer freeware, you got AVG or Avast or any number out there, uh, or certainly maybe moving to more of an enterprise uh, uh, antivirus software. We would also recommend a standalone certificate server um, to be able to hand out authentication certificates to people as they try to log on to the network uh, and making sure that uh, you're using a quarantine there and it's going to grab a hold of that machine, look at the credentials on that machine and make sure they're where they need to be before a certificate is, is handed out. And then finally, um, an off-site leased LAN, which we touched on in the backup and security plan. Um, and that again is just a, a means of keeping data secure and off-site should a disaster happen. Um, with that said, that would be, that would wrap up our, our uh, design and implementation portion of it. Uh, certainly I'm sure there are questions and I want to go ahead and open the floor for that opportunity now.